Number 78, the diameter of a huge pizza pie is 48 inches. What is the area of the pizza? So our question is asking for the area of a pizza and we're given the diameter. So diameter, automatically we have a circle. That diameter is 48 inches. We want the area of the pizza. I've mentioned this before. You've probably seen it in my videos, but apple pies are two. Earlier in this multiple choice and fill in the blank overview, we have already talked about this stuff with circles. Cherry pies, delicious apple pies are two. So in order for us to find the area of the pizza, we need the radius. That's what that R stands for. And since the diameter is 48 inches, the radius is always going to be half of the diameter. So the radius will be 24 inches. Now, if we look at our answer choices, notice that pi is still in our answer. So we do not need to use 3.14 here. We can just go ahead and say area equals pi times our radius, which is 24. And we want to square that radius. Do not multiply by two. So 24 squared, again, that's 24 times 24, not 24 times two. So therefore our area is going to be pi times 576, as you can see over here. But I'm going to go ahead and write the 576 in front. Then we can put the pi after it. That means the same thing because we are multiplying here. Our answer is going to be D. Number 79, Fred and Wilma took a road trip. For the first part, they traveled 240 miles in four hours. For the second part of their trip, they traveled 420 miles in eight hours. What was their average speed for the entire trip? What you don't want to do, we're trying to find the average speed for the entire trip. You don't want to find the average speed here and you do not want to find the average speed here and then add those up and divide by two. That does not always work. And the reason why that's not gonna work here is because we have two different time intervals. The first part of their trip, they drove for less time than they did on the second part of their trip. The way to find the average speed for the entire trip, take the total distance, and that total distance is gonna be 240 plus 420. So 240 plus 420. Their total distance is 660 miles. Take your total distance and divide by the total time. Four hours and eight hours, we want to divide by a total time of 12 hours. So average speed for the entire trip, total distance divided by total time. And if we take 660, we divide it by 12, we get an average speed of 55. And something else I want you to notice here too, we do see MPH. Well, technically that is miles per hour. That's exactly where that's coming from when I wrote the miles over the hours. Now you would not get that answer had you found the average speed for the first part then the average speed for the second part, and then if you try to do something with those. That is not how you find the average speed for the entire trip. Now number 80, we're doing some algebra. We're trying to divide here. Now when you're dividing, you can think of this as a fraction. So I'm just gonna change the way this looks, but it's gonna mean the same thing. So this first part, 32 a to the fifth, b cubed, c to the ninth. We can put all of that over, because notice we do have parentheses. So it's all of this stuff over this stuff right here at the bottom. So I'm going to write that. Now we don't have any addition or subtraction. Like we don't have a plus or a minus up here and we don't have that down here either. And if we did, it would make this problem much more complicated or maybe even impossible to simplify. You don't have to worry about that for the T's, but what we can do since we don't have any of that addition or subtraction going on, Let's focus on our numbers first. Let's take the 32 over 64, and you need to simplify that fraction. You can divide that, you'll get 0 0.5. 32 divided by 64 is 0 0.5. That's the same thing as one half. But notice if I simplify here. Now you can divide by a whole bunch of different things. You can divide by two, you can divide by four, you can divide by eight, you can divide by 16. Heck, you can even divide both of these by 32. So simplifying, you have a lot of options there, but 32 is the greatest common factor. That's the biggest number that we can divide both of these by. And 32 divided by 32 is 1. 64 divided by 32 is 2. So notice we do get 1 half. 
So this means we have a one at the top and a two at the bottom. Automatically, we can eliminate A and we can eliminate C because the two is at the top. We want the two at the bottom. And you may wonder, well, what about this one? I mean, I, I can stick an understood one here in front of that B, C cubed. I can stick an understood one there in front of the A squared. We don't need it there. That's why you don't see it, but there is an understood one. Now let's move on to our variables. Wherever you have more variables at, so to speak, A to the fifth over A to the seventh, we have more A's at the bottom. How many more do we have? We have two. The rule here is you subtract exponents. And we're dealing with just the A's, don't worry about the B's or the C's. But again, we have more A's at the bottom, so we want our A to be at the bottom. And we have two more A's at the bottom than we do at the top. There's our A squared. Notice A squared is in the wrong spot for D. We don't want it at the top. We had more A's at the bottom. And since we're on a roll here, let's go ahead and look at the B's. We have more B's at the top. How many more B's do we have at the top? We have one extra B. Three minus two gives us one. Well, that right there is a B to the understood first power. If you don't see an exponent with a variable, it's automatically raised to the first power. Understood one there again. And then last but not least, let's look at our letter C. Where do we have more C's at? We have more C's at the top. C to the ninth. How many more C's do we have? Nine minus six gives us three. So we have C cubed left at the top. Our answer is gonna be B. Now let's jump into the workbook for some additional tips. So here's number 78. We did say our answer was D. We're given the diameter. You gotta find the radius in order to find the area of a circle. Apple pies are two. So don't forget that when it comes to circles, even though we didn't deal with circumference, Cherry pies delicious, apple pies are too. We definitely use the apple pies there. Section 15, more circle problems. First three examples in this video, watch that for additional examples. 79, I did mention take the total distance and divide by the total time. That's how we got 55 miles per hour. Section three, rate, time, and distance problems. Additional video there. Then number 80, we did turn this into a fraction, and I mentioned wherever you have more of a certain variable is where it will remain in the answer. I was asking you, where did we have more A's? Where did we have more B's? Where did we have more C's? And we even eliminated our answer choices based on that, and then just bear in mind being able to simplify fractions with just numbers, like the 32 over 64. Look at the end of section five for additional examples there. Section five mainly deals with the equations, but I did include some of these division problems at the end of section five. I mentioned just a few moments ago about DMA, developmental math, which are some videos that I used in an older course that I taught at the college that I work at. The beginning of this video here has some of those examples, but they can be slightly tougher, but still worth watching. 